Mm, let's go with this again, actually. English. I think this is something I could definitely use some more practice in. And I think it's actually something that would fit well with my uh, playing style. Uh, okay, so, so far English, symmetrical variation. And that is being maintained. I'm going to try to sneak this move in soon. A3, B4. Will it be prevented with A5? I believe A5 is best here. Okay, it's being played. So now what? Is knight here an idea? No. Uh, well, maybe it is with like uh, F4 and then to D5 where I'm controlling it. But my other thought is to go here. E1, C2, and E3. This is assuming that this pawn is going to play here though. I don't know if it's going to play there though. Let me do this in the meantime. I like reserving my e pawns possibilities. And I think playing here right now, knight takes, pawn takes, and then I could get in b4. I'm going to go with this. Doubled pawns in the center are not necessarily a, a liability. This one right here on d5 could turn out to be cramping in some in some way it does make my bishop look a bit silly uh, it's not going to be seeing the b7 c6 or a8 squares anytime soon and now that hmm. okay i'm going to take and then what maybe i shouldn't have taken though now this should be all right i think Ooh, wait a second. Is the queen close to being trapped or what? Uh-oh. Bishop g5, queen here. The queen is running out of room. Anybody else see that when it was played? She only has one square available to her. <clears throat> one of my students a while ago had asked me how do you know when you can trap the queen or something like that and I'm not sure the exact response I gave but there's something along the lines of whenever she's really short on squares and right now she's short on squares so that's what I'm looking into I see bishop g5 I'm seeing queen f5 is the only response it's a very forcing moves right here as a follow-up I believe I could play h six and or h3 threatening g4 and the queen is dead so i think after bishop g5 queen f5 h3 this move is needed and when this move is played i can then say to myself aha d5 is weakened and i could maybe look to get one of my pieces here i think it's worthwhile to do that to get some weakness in the center the queen will be saved, but this square will be weakened. I believe this is forced. Or, actually, I guess this pawn push could be played, but it's not without compromising the kingside structure. Okay, now it's just the, the center that has been weakened. Um, so, mission accomplished with the bishop. Let me come back to where. I might actually want to run all the way home. Or do I? Right here. I could get this move in. I don't know if I want to give up my dark square bishop. Or maybe I do. What about pawn push, actually? No. This? No. Oh, man. I'm stuck. I'm going to play here and then look to play here next and then knight to d2. Something like that is my plan. So I don't know if it was worth the time invested to go forward with that, but at least you could uh, follow my train of thought and how you could maybe force a weakness in your opponent's position. Um, <coughs> because how it plays out in 
in chess is what? What what actually goes on? When you're just starting out, your opponent will be in the early goings you'll see some flat out blunders, your opponent dropping a pawn or a piece, and it may still happen today in your own games. But then that next level is going to be, well, your opponent starts to not drop the pawns or the pieces, and uh, they might leave some weaknesses, but even an even stronger opponent won't be even creating weaknesses on their own, and you'll be having to induce weaknesses, which is something that was just accomplished. But then again, I still am questioning, was it worthwhile to run in for that? Was it uh, time well spent? Not so sure. Um, I could gain more time. I'm looking to pivot on e4 and then um, I'll maybe get this in. Like, let, me, let me do this right now. My knight wants to be on that weakened square. It's taking forever for him to get to that point, but hopefully once there, uh, it's going to be inconvenient for my opponent. So there is this move and my position is getting broken down quite a bit and I think that that is actually a, a good move, f4. Hopefully I can be defending though. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So knight d5, b4, I finally want to get this move in. Uh, I have this square available on b6. I'm within checking distance with my knight once it's on d5. I really don't have another move that I'm considering besides knight d5 and b4. Pawn takes, I just recapture right away. I do have this defended by my bishop. He's a very important piece to hang on to. Uh, I think I'd be welcome to many exchanges here because I'm finding my king right now as less safe than my opponent's king. Pawn takes, pawn takes. I'm okay with these exchanges. I think it's better for black to, whoa, to not do that. I don't know about that move. I guess it is allowing the knight to camp out here for a moment, but uh, or, or that's happening. Okay, I'm going to take that and then open up the B file. So I guess bishop takes is what my opponent thought I had to do, but I, didn't, I don't have to do that. Let's open this up. It's the B file that I want to be getting to. Actually, I could get here, this pawn. Um, I might end up giving this pawn up. Let's play here. Rook right here, or maybe... Yeah, that's a decent one. This could be doubled. Uh, the F file, there could be a lot of pressure. Let me put pressure on this pawn. There is no rook move there. More pressure. Maybe there's a pawn push at some point, similar to uh, the game against William B, where I had this battery over here, and I eventually played f4. That could uh, come up as well. That might actually be a pretty good idea. We're evening out with the clocks. Ah, an in-betweener. But I could t defend my bishop. Okay, this is not working out now. If there was pawn takes being on my queen, I could have played here and defended my bishop. I think pawn takes on this square would have been more interesting, though, because it was on my queen and bishop. Pawn push, pawn push. Exchange bishops, and this guy's, I mean, this guy's passed. I have, uh, actually, I could do this right now. I have enough coverage for it. Let's trade bishops. And I'm on this point. Queen trade, and I'm still on the B pawn. So I gave that pawn up, but my rooks are very active. And now this is going to be leading to mate, I think. One pig looking for another. This is a mate and one threat. Right here. And less than 20 now. Okay, 10 seconds remaining. Okay, good game. Let's back up here, and let's see how we can make an improvement for either one of us. Now, okay, so you saw my reasoning with why I wanted to go with the bishop move. I think just play it safe. 
And by play it safe, I think just capture with the bishop here. You don't run into this nonsense about me being able to induce some weakness against, or in, in the center or on your king side. But I get one of the two right now after h3. You got to do h5 or e5. h5 weakens the king side. e5 allows me to get to this square. It took forever before I got there, but keep that in mind. Uh, I'm able to induce a weakness in right here. Don't push that pawn. Here's a better plan. Maybe you could run with... Um, how about what? Like, what else can you do here? Maybe get developed. I wonder if... Uh, or, or maybe get rid of your knight, my knight somehow. Queen to, queen to d8 and maybe get your bishop to e6. Or, here's another one. It's your move in this position instead of that. Consider, actually, b5. What about b5 right here? That's a good way to get your rook working. b5, and this file can open up. Maybe your bishop could play here, but no. He's good right here sitting on his home square. It might be the case. Here's, here's one way to view it. It might turn out to be the case that if you play b5 and I play b3, we have an exchange on the c file. These rooks come off the board, and then it's kind of like this bishop is already developed. There's no need to move him in order for him to be playing a constructive role in the position. It could turn out that you need to move your bishop in order for the rook to come over here if the b file is not opening up. But I think b5, exchange, these guys come off the board, and maybe there's some way to exploit uh, my king position. Maybe, can you get your queen over here somehow? Or maybe play h5, h4. I don't think the pawn push is good. Um, I don't think capturing is good. I think keeping the tension is good. But maybe throw another pawn into the mix. h5, h4, induce some weaknesses. Maybe allow for your king to come over here. Is uh, some slight improvements you could be running with. I think I, I'm just uh, I'm starting to definitely be better here that's a, a pawn is a pawn is a pawn um, there's much less worry against my king once you're playing f3 there so